Uh, would you like an olive, Adam? Uh, yes. We've, we've got yes. That's random. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> olive for you? Oh, yeah, I like olives. little forks here. Where do you suppose uh, these olives are from? Christy? Oh. Thank you, Adrian. Mm. Oh, ladies Sicily. first, don't yes. Are they from yes. Sicily? No, they're not from Sicily. They're wow. from, where are they from? Sussex. They're from Sussex. They're from the they South They are, Coast. yes. And we sent a man who really knows about olives, not. obviously not him, no. Italian chef Aldo Zilli, to see if Sussex can really compete with Sicily. Hey, hey Mambo. 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 Hey, hey, Mambo. Mambo. Nothing adds zinc to Italian food like a good juicy olive. And there's nothing better than driving around the Italian countryside hunting for delicious fresh ones. But this isn't an Italian job. I mean, we're Sussex in the south coast of Britain because last week a couple who grew olives here now start selling them commercially. And they've done a great job so far. Well, we bought the nursery two years ago and we had this huge greenhouse that we thought we've got to do something with. And uh, my husband suggested that we planted olive trees. But have you had any training? Anything we've learned has been off the internet. Before we came here, we've never grown anything. I've killed every house plant I've ever had. And, um, Are you joking? <laughs> Well, they're special trees because you haven't got the right climate in this country. We went to a local nursery. He actually suggested that we had trees from Tuscany because of the climate was closer to right. that of this area of mm -hmm. England. How did you tackle the pollen problem here? It's the wind that pollinates the trees. Right. And although we've opened all the vents, there's just no, not enough wind to blow the pollen around. We put a feather duster on the trees and dusted them onto a piece of foam and then lifted it, it up with the pollen carefully and carried it over onto Wicked. the next tree and threw it onto the next tree. <laughs> oh, God. And it worked. Sarah and her husband aren't the first people in Britain to grow olives, but they're the first people to sell them. Thank you. I can't wait to tell you that you tried it. Mmm. Very crunchy. Bitter, but very good flavour. I think Sarah, with a bit of work, she's definitely going to get there. But you know what? There's a lot more to these little babies than you think. Through history, it's been a symbol of power and luxury in the Mediterranean. In ancient Greece, it was an olive tree which helped the goddess Athena win the hearts of the city of Athens. Well, when I first arrived in this country, you could only get olive oil from a chemist. But in actual fact, olives have been part of the British culture for almost 2,000 years. The Romans introduced the olive into this country. If you look at the back of a 50 pence piece, you've got dear old Britannia on the back. She's sitting down there with a lion. But actually, if you actually have a look at what she's actually holding in her left hand, she's oh holding no. an olive branch. Now, how on earth did an olive branch actually make its way onto our 50p piece? I think we've only had the potato for about five, six hundred years, so it's actually far more traditional to eat a few olives than it is to actually sort of eat a packet of crisps. So what do we think of these Sussex olives? I'm not sure where they're ready. Do you know what? That one's got a really nice flavour, actually. There's hardly any bitterness left in it. In order to make a really good olive, it takes time. These trees are only two years old. Now, I'm amazed that they're already cropping as heavily as they are. I think that's fantastic. Give them around about five or six years, and you're going to have a fantastic first-rate product to them. Italiano. Fascinating stuff. I've eaten nearly all the bowl of those. <laughs>